Hey guys, Andy here, and we are back again with part three in this three-part series, and we're talking about gauge R and R. Part one was all about terms and definitions. Part two was all about the average and range method. How do you collect data and calculate important statistics like repeatability, reproducibility, gauge R and R, and total variation? If you haven't seen those videos, I'll link them in the description below. Today is all about interpreting your results. Once you have those calculations in hand, how do you assess whether or not your measurement system is capable of meeting your intended purpose or your needs? Let's head over to the computer and get started. All right, let's jump into today's video. Here we are, Greenbelt Academy. We're, we're, we're talking about the Greenbelt exam, and we're here in the measure phase of the problem solving process. This is where we're going to measure our problem, measure our product, measure our process, but we can't forget about the measurement systems that we're using to take those measurements. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is the gauge r, &R process to evaluate your measurement systems. Now I'm, ta I'm teaching this as part of Greenbelt Academy, but I also have courses for the Black Belt exam and the CQ exam. And I, and I wanted to teach this topic because it, it helps out so many students prepare for so many different, uh, so many different exams out there. Now, in terms of the actual content for today, today's video is part of a three-part series. In the first part of that series, which I'll link to in the description below, we talked about all of the key concepts and terms that you need to know to successfully perform a gauge on R, like repeatability and reproducibility and measurement system variation and total variation, as well as the difference between precision and accuracy. If you missed it, go back and check it out. That one's incredibly important. In the second part of the video series, we actually walked through the average and range method where we collected data and we calculated those important concepts like repeatability, reproducibility, gauge R and R, total variation, all that sort of stuff. In fact, uh, that video's got a, an actual Excel spreadsheet that you can use to perform a gauge R and R. I'll link to it in this description as well if you wanna see how to do the average and range method. And, and then today's video is all about interpreting your results. You calculated a gauge on our value and you calculated total variation. Is it good or is it bad? Are we using the right gauge? That's the point of today's lecture is how do you interpret your results to know whether or not your measurement system is capable for the purpose that you're using it. And so in today's video, we're going to go through the precision tolerance ratio and the percent of total process variation. I'm going to talk about when you'd use them, why you'd use them, how to make the calculations, as well as how to interpret the value at the end of the calculation and some of the risks associated with, I'll call it mediocre gauge R&R values. Okay. Now, again, just kind of as an introduction to the whole concept today, it's so incredibly important that everybody out there understand that the measurement devices and systems that you use have variation and error just like every other process. Sometimes as continuous improvement professionals or quality professionals, we get so hyper-focused on our process and our process equipment, things like CNC machines and turning machines and drilling machines and you name it, we get so focused on the process, but we forget that the way we take measurements and the, and the systems that we use and the equipment that we use, calipers, micrometers, thermometers, weigh scales, electrical measurement systems, all of those measurement systems introduce or have variation just like every other process. And the perfect example of that is, let's say you turn something on a lathe and you, you take it off the machine and you measure the inner diameter of, of a hole that you drill. And you measure 50 parts and you take that data and you throw it into Minitab or Excel or whatever. The mistake that a lot of folks make is they assume that all of the variation, notice, notice how this data, this data set has variation in it. We assume that that variation comes exclusively from the process. And that is a mistake. You have to understand and you have to recognize that a, a portion of this variation will actually come not from the products or the processes themselves, it will come from the measurement system that you're using, okay? And that's why we do a gauge r, &R. We We perform a gauge r, r not just to quantify this variation, but also to evaluate whether or not we've chosen the right measurement system for the application, right? Here, we're, we're measuring a diameter. Is this caliper the right measurement system for this measurement, for this application? The way that we do that is we, you know, for, if you're going to make this evaluation for a measurement system to be quote unquote acceptable or capable for its intended purpose, this measurement system variation must be small relative to two, one of two different things. And we'll talk about that later in, in the lecture today. It has to be small relative either to your design tolerance, right? This inner diameter has some, some design tolerance or the process variation, okay? And we'll talk about choosing between those two, those two methods, 
when you'd use them, why you'd use them, and how to do the calculations, okay? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, again, if you, just to refresh on lecture two, we went through the average and range method, and we calculated repeatability, reproducibility, gauge R&R, total variation, and again, the purpose of today's lecture is to help you take your gauge R&R value right here in the middle and evaluate whether or not your measurement system is capable for its intended purpose. Now, uh, again, there's two ways to do this. There are two different methods that you can use to assess the capability or the acceptability of your measurement system, and it depends on how you're going to use that measurement system in production. Okay, so let's talk about the first one. The first method is called the precision tolerance ratio. If you use your measurement device, right, if the purpose of your measurement device is to measure your product to evaluate conformance against a specification, we call that product control, right? That measurement system is intended to control your product relative to a specification. If that's the way you're going to use your measurement system, the right method for evaluating the capability of your measurement system is called the precision tolerance ratio, where we are going to compare your measurement system variation against your specification limits. Okay, that's, that's the kind of the first method. The other way in which you might use a, a measurement system is for what I would call process control. Okay, sometimes we use measurement systems for product control, measure, meaning that it, it's either conforming or it's not. Sometimes we take measurements from our process and we put those measurements into a control chart to evaluate and control our process. Okay, there's a difference here. And in this scenario, when we care about process control, what we end up using or, or the right method for evaluating your, your measurement system is called the percent of total process variation where we're gonna compare our measurement system variation against our process variation, right? What you might, the variation you might expect to see in this control chart or, or from your process, that's gonna become the kind of the, the bottom half of the equation, what we compare to, okay? Now, the good news is no matter which method that you use, both are evaluated the same. Both of these methods, the precision tolerance ratio and the percent of total process variation, both of those methods translate your measurement system variation your gauge R and R value, essentially into a percentage value that you get to evaluate. And no matter which method you use, the evaluation process is the same. Uh, you just have to pick the right method before you ever get started, okay? Let's start with the precision tolerance ratio, okay? This is this is where we're, we're doing product control and we're using our measurement system to, to evaluate conformance to a specification, okay? Here's the actual calculation. It's called the precision tolerance ratio. It's literally a ratio of your precision relative to your tolerance. What do we mean by precision and what do we mean by tolerance? Your precision is the variation from your measurement system. It's your gauge R and R value. It's the error or the spread or the precision of your measurement system. Your tolerance is essentially the design tolerance for whatever feature it is that you're measuring. Okay. Now the way that we actually, we actually take this measurement is we take our gauge R and R value measured in a single standard deviation and we multiply by six. I'll explain that here in just a second. And then in the bottom half of the equation, we literally take our upper spec and our lower spec for whatever feature it is that we're measuring. Okay. Now I want to explain the whole kind of six standard deviations. Okay. When you have your measurement system variation, which is, which is calculated as a measure of standard deviation, we want to talk about that variation as an overall spread. Okay. We want to, we want to capture the, what I'll call the full width or the full spread of that variation. And when we, when we multiply by six, essentially what we're doing is we're capturing 99.7% of the full width of that measurement system variation. Other textbooks like AIAG sometimes use 5.19, which captures 99% of the spread. It's up to you which value you use. I tend to use six because it's a little bit more conservative. That's why we use six, okay? And then what we do in this calculation is we take these six standard deviations and we compare them against our product design tolerance. Remember, you're measuring a feature inner diameter, outer diameter, I don't care what it is, that feature has an upper spec and a lower spec, okay? And the way that you should interpret this value, right, when we, when we compare these two things against each other, what you end up with is a calculation that reflects the total percentage or the portion of this tolerance range that is consumed exclusively by your measurement system. 
Okay. And again, you know, when you're, when you are tolerancing a part, we want, we want that tolerance to account for process variation and it should also account for measurement system variation. And so in a perfect world, this proportion or this percentage would be quite small. Okay. And so again, I'll show you how to interpret this value here in a second. When you calculate this number, it's going to be a percentage. 15%, 10%, 40%, okay? And that number reflects, again, the percentage of your specification window that is consumed exclusively by your measurement system, okay? That's the first calculation. The other calculation that you'll often see in systems like Minitab or in the Excel spreadsheet that I give you is the percent of total process variation. Okay, so I want to explain this. In this, in this scenario, or if you think back to the kind of the gauge r, &R process, when we did our gauge r, r we measured our measurement system variation, we measured our actual process variation, or, or what we called part-to-part -part variation, and we also quantified the total variation in our entire system, okay, our, the total measured variation in our gauge r, &R okay? And what we calculate here is what we call the percent of variation, meaning that what percentage or what proportion of the total measured variation came to us from the measurement system versus what percent of our variation came from the process itself. Because again, in a perfect world, your process would contribute the majority of the variation and your measurement system variation would be only a small percentage of the actual variation that we experienced in the data that we, the, in the calculations we made in part two of the video, our measurement system variation, our gauge r, &R was calculated as 0 0.5496 inches. That's, that's a measure of standard deviation. The total measured variation also reflected as a single standard deviation was 3.0802 meaning that 17.8 or or 18 percent of our total variation came from the measurement system and then of course the remaining variation came from the process itself okay and that's how you interpret this value when you see that number 18 percent essentially what you're being told is that 18 percent of your total variation is consumed by or comes from just your measurement system alone Okay, and again, in a perfect world, that number would be it would be as small as possible. One thing I do want to point out here, uh, because in the previous calculation with the precision tolerance ratio, I did the whole six sigma thing. Here we don't do that, right? Here we just take one standard deviation divided by one standard deviation, and that's how we calculate the percent of total process variation. So there's no need to to do the whole six sigma or five point one five sigma thing here. We're literally just comparing. Uh, two measures of standard deviation against each other, okay? Now let's talk about how to interpret your results. So no matter which method you use, the interpretation is still the same. Remember, in an ideal world, your measurement system variation or your error should be small. So when you're looking at that percentage, any number, any calculation, no matter which calculation you use, any calculation less than 10% is considered acceptable. No issues there. You're good to go. That measurement system variation is small relative to your, your design tolerance or your process variation. You're good to go. Okay. On the other end of the spectrum, if you calculate that percentage, and I don't care which one it is, and it's greater than 30%, the, the general interpretation is that that gauge is not acceptable, okay? Do not pass go, do not collect $200. You have too much measurement system variation. You need to figure that out, that's a problem, okay? And then there's this kind of this gray area in the middle. If your measurement system variation falls between 10% and 30%, Again, the measurement system is generally considered acceptable. However, you should think about the risks, right? The risk, the application, and the costs associated with that measurement system. Let's talk about those risks now, okay? Here's a nice little table that summarizes how to interpret your results. And let's say you're here in the middle and you're thinking about the risks associated with measurement system variation. There's really two types of risks that you need to think about. Number one is called false rejects. This is called producer's risk. This is when you build a good part, but because you have measurement system variation, that part gets rejected and it is thrown away. Good parts being rejected is, is essentially a business problem. You're throwing away good parts that, that you could otherwise have passed along to the customer, and that variation hurts you and costs your organization money because you're having to throw away good product. Okay, That's one form of risk to think about. The other form of risk is called consumer's risk. The, I, I would also call this a false accept. Imagine you built a bad product, but because you have measurement system variation, 
that that part is actually accepted and passed along to the customer that to me is quality risk that's consumer risk that's a problem false accepts can happen or are a real risk to consider when you have mediocre gauge R&R like this, okay? So that's kind of the big picture interpretation. The other way, by the way, let's say you have, let's talk about now what you would do if you find yourself with a gauge R&R greater than 30% or maybe you're in this in-between area and you wanna reduce your gauge R&R. Okay. One thing that, that Minitab and other systems will do, and my Excel spreadsheet does this for you as well, is it takes all of the different sources of your variation and it breaks them down into their components. So the evaluation we just did was about gauge R&R. &R, okay. And let's say we came out with a number that was like 27, 28%. Still an acceptable gauge, but we need to make considerations for risk. The next thing that you should do as a continuous improvement professional or quality professional is to look at the sources of variation, right? Repeatability and reproducibility. Those are the two aspects of precision that you need to think about. And this is why it's important for you to understand the, the kind of the terms and definitions, because when you look at this, at this data, you should immediately go, why is our reproducibility so high? How can we improve the way operators take measurements to reduce the variation that's coming to us from our operators? If we can do that, we can reduce the overall variation in our entire measurement system and we can improve our gauge R&R &R and feel more comfortable with our measurement system being capable for its intended purpose. The other, the other data that you'll often see in terms of like a mini tab report is you'll see these breakdowns in, a, in graphical format. So you'll see a graph, you'll have the total variation on the right, part to part variation, which should be the primary component, right? You want this number to be really high. You've got your total gauge R&R &R here on the left. It's, it's below 30% which means you're technically acceptable, but you gotta make considerations for risk. And then, and then you can see the individual components, repeatability, reproducibility, and that's what you need to focus on. We've gotta, we've gotta watch our operators take measurements, look at the way they do it, see if we can't make improvements and, and improve our gauge R&R. &R. And that is it for today. If you enjoyed today's lecture, I've got a ton more resources. I've, here's the spreadsheet. Go to greenbeltacademy.com slash gauge R&R. You can, you can get the average and range template. It's got all the calculations in there as well. If you want to continue on as a Greenbelt, I've got a great free course, greenbeltacademy.com slash free course. I've also got courses for the black belt exam, the CQ exam. I've got a ton of resources. No matter what exam you're, you're working towards, uh, I've got resources to help you out. Videos, practice exams, downloadable content, all sorts of resources to help you prepare for a ton of different exams. The other thing I would ask is if you enjoyed today's lecture, do me a huge favor, hit the like button. It helps me find and serve more people just like you. And then if you want to stay on this green belt journey or CQE journey or black belt journey, I don't care what journey you're on, hit the subscribe button. That way, as I publish new content, uh, you'll get notified and you can stay on that journey with me and, and uh, grow yourself. Thanks so much. Bye.